The sport of ice hockey is as connected to the state of Iowa as spaghetti and meatballs are to the Irish cuisine. It's against the odds of that unnatural connection that one of Central Iowa's most popular winter attractions for 35 years has in fact been the sport of ice hockey, and more specifically, the tradition-rich Des Moines Buccaneers of the United States Hockey League. Like the State Fair, the insurance profession, and presidential caucuses, the Buccaneers are woven into the framework that makes up Des Moines and all of Central Iowa. The team has had its share of good times and bad, but regardless of the outcome, the team has become as much a part of the life of Central Iowans as the site of the principal tower in the skyline. For many, their first experience with hockey came at a Bucks game. They've grown up and introduced their own kids to the sport through an experience with the Buccaneers. Whether it's that company outing or it's coming and sitting in the same seat with the same group of friends over and over again, the Buccaneers have been here. From serving as the backdrop of a date to the setting for a family outing, the Buccaneers have been here. From cheering championship teams to seeing professional stars shine, the Buccaneers have been here. And while the Buccaneers have been here, so has the community support behind it. 35 years worth of unrivaled passion that has made a hockey team one of Des Moines' most popular attractions. Minor league hockey in Des Moines dates back to the 1950s, when short-lived teams used the Veterans Memorial Auditorium. But it wasn't until the building of Buccaneer Arena in Urbandale in 1960 that hockey as a spectator sport held a consistent presence. Until the mid-1970s, Des Moines had entries in the International Hockey League, but played by travel logistics, the teams never survived, and for a period of nearly a decade, Hockey as a spectator sport in Central Iowa was dead. That all changed with a fateful visit by a team that would leave a mark on the entire nation. In the fall of 1979, the arena hosted an exhibition game between the St. Louis Blues and the U.S. Olympic men's hockey team. And during their visit, Team USA head coach Herb Brooks suggested that local hockey supporters invest in bringing a United States Hockey League team to the arena as a way of providing a regular tenant for the building and refueling the slowly dying youth hockey program. Thus, on Valentine's Day in 1980, the Des Moines Buccaneers were formally announced and in September 1980, the Buccaneers took to the ice for the very first time. On-ice success mostly eluded the Bucks in the 1980s with only two seasons in which the team finished over 500. One of those seasons was 1987-1988, with a team that featured Bob Nardella, who registered 111 points, a franchise record that still exists today. In 1986, goaltender John Blue was selected in the 10th round of the NHL draft by Winnipeg, and would eventually become the first Buccaneer to reach the NHL in 1992, when he suited up for 46 games with the Boston Bruins. The Buccaneers' popularity exploded in the 1990s with the arrival of legendary head coaches Bob Ferguson and Scott Owens. Under their leadership, the Bucs became a powerhouse in the 1990s, a total of 383 regular season games. The franchise won its first Clark Cup postseason championship in 1992, winning the championship in dramatic fashion, which was the trademark of the decade. Randy Hankinson's overtime goal in the decisive fifth game of the championship series against Dubuque brought the Clark Cup to Des Moines for the first time. The Bucks then rode that momentum to winning the USA Junior A National Tournament two weeks later. The 1994-1995 season is what locals affectionately refer to as the Triple Crown season. The Bucks went 38-5-5 as they ran away with the Anderson Cup and after a couple of postseason victories, were set to face their nemesis, the Omaha Lancers, in the Clark Cup Finals. Trailing in the series and facing elimination in Game 4 in Omaha, the Bucks rattled off an amazing five unanswered goals to force a decisive fifth game back in Des Moines, which the Bucks would win in comeback fashion as well, earning the franchise's second Clark Cup. The magical run wasn't done, 
as the memories only grew at the national tournament. In the semifinal, Jeff Bennett's double overtime goal beat Dubuque. That drama would be topped by what happened in the final against the rival Omaha. Trailing Omaha in the final game, in the waning seconds, Reggie Berg scored to force overtime, and in overtime, Trevor Rosen put an end to the game and capped the amazing season when he buried the puck. The Bucks also won the USHL's regular season title and national championship in 1998. Then in 1998-1999, the Bucks lost just seven games, won 19 games in a row at one point, and won the regular season and USHL playoff titles. All in all, the Bucks put together an impressive resume in the 1990s with two Gold Cups, four Anderson Cups, and another three Clark Cups. The city and franchise also hosted the national tournament in 1994. Goaltender Scott Clementson was a product of the Des Moines Youth Hockey Program and eventually became the Bucks goaltender in the mid-1990s. The Bucks starter would parlay his success into a collegiate scholarship, a Frozen Four title, and a spot in the NHL, becoming the first, and to this point still only, Iowa native to play in the NHL. On the ice, success wasn't as grand for the Bucks after the 1990s as the USHL saw a move to greater parity between expansion, better overall operations, better recruiting, and better coaching. The USHL was a much harder place to dominate as it had been in the 1990s. Parity became the norm in the USHL as a draft process was instituted, thus eliminating teams from having protected territories and spreading out the best talent. Still, the Bucks continued to make the playoffs year after year. Tom Carroll followed Scott Owens behind the bench before Bob Ferguson made his return to the Buccaneers bench. Ferguson would coach another three and a half seasons, finishing with 261 victories in his Bucks career and leaving as one of the winningest coaches in USHL history. The 2005-2006 season will always go down as a pivotal point in Buccaneers history. Led by highly touted Kyle Ocposo and USA Junior A Player of the Year Trevor Lewis, the Buccaneers returned the franchise back to the top of the USHL. The Bucks put together a 33-21-6 record and returned to the playoffs in 2005-2006 under former player Red Simon. Buccaneers then went on to win the 2006 Clark Cup in a thrilling five-game series against Sioux Falls. The Bucks were back on top. In 2006-2007, the Bucks again made a deep run into the playoffs before losing in a one-game semifinal in overtime at Waterloo. Off the ice, the team in 2010-2011 broke a decade-old team record when there were 11 sellouts at Buccaneer Arena. And on January 16, 2011, the Buccaneers became only the second USHL team to get to 800 all-time regular season victories. It would mark another milestone for this storied organization that has seen plenty of accolades. With 35 years of history behind them, the Buccaneers have much to draw from and much to live up to. Here's Katuri for the one. Katuri shoots, he scores! <laughs> The goal on the sidewall. Goal scores! The six goals, by the way, for the Buccaneers. Magic a season high. Perica near circle. He scores! The Des Moines Buccaneers and the United States Hockey League are the number one avenue for advancing players onto college and eventually the National Hockey League. Simple as that. With 10 Buccaneer alumni having skated in the NHL in 2013 2014 alone, and 23 total in team history. The franchise is a legitimate feeder system to the National Hockey League. Not to mention the dozens upon dozens of players who advance to high-level Division I colleges, an accomplishment that shouldn't be overlooked. Alumni include the likes of Eric Cole, Matt Reed, Alex Chiazon, Trevor Lewis, and Jeff Petrie. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the two coaches there, Reg Simon and Todd Knott, um, they were a big influence on, uh, on my game. And, um, you know, I still talk uh, quite a bit to, with Reg Simon. Uh, and, um, you know, just random times throughout, he'll, you know, check in and see how we're doing. And um, so it's always here, good to hear a, a familiar voice. The alumni also includes Kyle Ogposo 
who in the summer of 2006 was selected in the first round of the NHL draft. Uh, being in Des Moines was an important year in my life. Um, you know, I still talk to uh, my billets regularly and, and see them, uh, definitely see them a few times a year, try to keep in touch with them. And uh, the team that we had was, uh, was awesome. It was tremendous. Uh, played with uh, Trevor Lewis and Jeff Petrie and Shane Sims, Troy Davenport, to name a few. And, you know, we had a really special team. We ended up winning the championship that year. And, you know, I'm forever grateful to, uh, to all the people that helped me out uh, in Des Moines and, and to you, the fans. It was, uh, it was a very special time in my life, so thank you. Originally conceived as a part of a major private land development in Urbandale, Buccaneer Arena has been the home to hockey in the Des Moines metro area since 1960. Soaked into its walls, seats, and crevices are years of memories and moments, and not just those of championship teams and great games, but personal moments. While newer, shinier buildings go up, it will take decades for them to collect the generations of memories stored within Buccaneer Arena. Whether it's learning how to skate for the first time here, or spending time with a family member, the arena holds a special place in area fans' hearts. Buccaneer Arena is a local sporting landmark, an icon, if you will. Even with its age, the arena itself isn't just some charity case either, as it is a wonderful place to take in a hockey game. With roughly 3,400 seats and only 20 rows of bleachers surrounding the ice surface, everyone is close to the action. An entirely new compressor unit was installed in recent years, assuring quality ice for users. Renovations to the Buccaneers locker room guarantees a professional standard. Improvements to the arena's sound system and video board have been done, as well as to the concession areas, which has included the installation of the long-desired ability to process credit cards. Improvements to the skyboxes include new carpeting, lighting, TV, and seats, and the franchise isn't done there, as upgrades to the building for many years to come are in the works. Nearly any sports program that has had any success can lay claim to a tradition, but the Buccaneers are able to back it up with a loyal and supportive fan base, a legendary facility, and a history of advancing players to the higher levels. The minor league sports landscape is littered with failed franchises, many of whom experienced greatness but couldn't sustain it. But the Buccaneers have lasted so long that the area wouldn't be the same without them. Whether it's that die-hard fan who exalts after a win and threatens to never return after a loss, all the way to the person who comes out just once a year to enjoy a beer and a game with some friends, the Des Moines Buccaneers holds a special place in Central Iowans' hearts. Here's Cardi with Don Lyman. Cardi's got it. Cardi nears with Cardi with shot. Scores! Backdoor pass. They score! Golf pass in front. Score! 